Hello, everybody. Welcome to my home. It's Reverend Jay here. And I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving holiday and also a happy Advent. It's the beginning of the church year. And Thanksgiving coupled with Advent, well, I pray that it's been a time of renewal, a rejuvenation, and hope. And even though we are apart in many ways, I hope that we find time and the opportunity to come together, to make connections, to strengthen our relationships, to make ourselves stronger. And I hope that you ate some good food also this holiday. I want to talk about Advent. It's a pretty major thing because, well, we know what's coming up. Advent leads into Christmas. But before we get into Christmas, we must prepare. Advent invites us to hope deeply as we watch and wait for the coming of God's great love in Christ, born again in our hearts and in our minds. As we retell the story of prophecy and promise through scripture, song, and traditions, our spirits are lifted up with this joyful expectation of a better future made possible through our faithful action. So are you ready? Hey, let's begin. I wonder what you could tell me about this picture. It's inside the church on our high altar. What colors do you see? What other symbols do you see? I wonder what this picture has to do with today's story. Well, let's enter into it. Hmm. As always, we need an underlayment. A king is coming, but it's not the kind of king that people thought was coming. This king has no army, no great house, no riches. The king was born a baby in a barn. The coming of this king is a mystery. A mystery is sometimes hard to enter, and that's why it's so important to have this time of Advent. Sometimes people walk right through this mystery and don't even notice Christmas is such a great mystery that it takes four weeks to get ready to enter it. And during this time, we are on the way to Bethlehem. The prophets, the holy family, the shepherds, and angels, the magi, and more. This journey was not just back then or there. It was also here and now. So today we remember the prophets. Notice that finger is pointing somewhere. They came so close to God and God came so close to them that they knew something important was going to happen in Bethlehem. They pointed the way to Bethlehem. They didn't know exactly what was going to happen there. But they knew this was the place. So today we remember the prophets. We light the candle. Just like we will in church today. This is the light of the prophets. Let's enjoy the light. Look, do you see how the flame is just one place? It's right here. When I change the light, it will no longer be in just one place. Watch. Do you see it? It's spreading out, getting thinner and thinner as it fills up the room with the light of the prophets. Anywhere you go, here you will be close to the prophets. 
prophets can be any one of us. Any of us here might be called to point the way to God's love. You might have noticed that the church uses two colors in Advent. Now at St. Matthew's, we have a very kind of like UCLA Bruins blue. But in a lot of churches, we use a deeper serum blue. And then some churches use purple. Now purple is a more traditional color for Advent, and it's also used during Lent. Now, purple is the color of kings and queens. And of course, back in the day, no one would wear purple in those days except for very royal people. And Roman citizens would wear just a little stripe of purple. But that was all. Purple is a very serious color. And sometimes we use it to mark the kingship or the, um, the, the grandness of God, Jesus. But that kingship, that grandness that we like to associate with God, well, not the same kind of uh, uh, royalty that we associate with armies and great houses and riches. We know that Jesus is very different. So I also want to mention about the blue that you see here. The blue usually symbolizes or the blueness of the sky. So when we look up at the sky, it's a very hopeful color. When we think about Mary, we think about her courage and her love. Also, the deep hope for a better tomorrow. And that she trusted and knew that God was bringing in. And so, whether we have blues or purples in the church, these are symbols of Advent that point us to this great hope of love being born in our hearts and for us to prepare. So I wonder for you, in that first part of the story that we heard about the prophets pointing us to that place of love, what might be your favorite part? So as the prophets point us to that way of love, I invite you to walk the ways of the prophets. God bless you and God keep you. Let's keep each other strong. Find what's right in the world. Look for the joy. Keep hope alive. It all starts right here. In the heart. Where God's love fills you and I with the stuff. Where God's love feeds you and I with the stuff that's life-giving. God bless you and God keep you. We will see each other soon.